Type number one. Since the loss of friction depends on velocity, because it depends on Reynolds number, and Reynolds number is a function of velocity, so eventually you're going to need velocity to calculate the friction loss. Velocity may be calculated given the volumetric flow rate. So you know the volumetric flow rate divided by the area of the pipe, which is normally this one. And you have the diameters. Yes, you're probably going to have the, the data of diameters. You will be able to calculate velocity. And with velocity, you calculate friction loss and velocity heads, and you can solve algebraically, and you're set. We have done this type of exercise before. You can check out in this block or block number three. There are plenty of exercises, but let me show you just for the sake of understanding what this t type one. What must be the pressure in A, so this right here, to satisfy the next system? So as you can see, the flow rate is going to go from A to B. We have one elbow, we've got two valves. We've got one inlet and one outlet. That's for shape or friction shape. We've got the volumetric flow rate in liters per maybe minutes, I don't know. The specific gravity is given, the viscosity is given, the size of the piping is given, it's two inches and it's a for a scheduled size you know the material it's iron or steel sorry you got the length the total length of the pipe and you got the height so let's do the balance oops the balance right here with the mechanical energy equation you can see that pa and pb are different so i cannot cancel those there is a change in height so i cannot cancel that the velocity in A and velocity in B, I can cancel them because they are equal to zero. There's no pump, so I'm going to take it away. There's no turbine, I'm going to take it away. So you could probably wonder right now, how can you move a fluid which is down and make it to go up? Well, it's because we have a pressurized tank right here. If the tank weren't pressurized, we will not be able to do this task. So as you can see, there is definitely a delta on pressures, there is a delta on height, and we need to calculate the friction loss. So, we need to find this. We, in theory, have everything else. We have the height, we can calculate the velocity, and with the velocity we can calculate the friction loss. Actually, let me do it. Friction loss is that of the shape and that of the wall. That of the wall is the friction factor times the length of the pipe divided by the diameter times the velocity head. So I do it, I need to find out the velocity. I do it from this equation, Q divided by A, which is this one right here, and I just substitute data, the volumetric flow rate, change it to seconds, it was minutes per second, and cubic meters and liters, so I have international units, and I got 3.35 meters per second is the velocity. So you can see I have length, I have diameter, I have velocity, I just need to find out my F value. The friction factor depends on Reynolds number and the material and the, and the diameter of the pipe. So the material is steel, so it has a relative roughness, it has a roughness of this. I need to divide it by this diameter in order to get the relative roughness, which is this value right here. Reynolds number is essentially this density, this velocity, the density, and the viscosity. I got this number. And then, either you can use chain equation or from Moody's diagram, I'm not going to show you, you need to already know how to do that, you get a F value of 0 0.022. Actually, I did it, sorry. And, yep, 8.5 is right here. So one of the benefits of your premium membership is that you can get Excel sheets, Word documents, and even some slideshows. Let me show you, for example, if you've been working with the course, you probably know that I have plenty of problems in Excel. I've been uploading some of these. You can check them, and once you get the idea, you will be able to study and play with the exercise and know, for example, parallel flow, what happens when you get plenty of friction in one side versus the other side. Or if you're doing a type 2 problem, you know that you don't have volumetric flow rate. So how can you assign uh, cells in order to get your velocities? 
Also you have here a system curve exercise and a pump curve exercise. Once you get that, you also have access for formulary and equations, so you may print it. If you are allowed to take notes for your exam, you can print many of these. So why not go and register for this awesome course, Incompressible Flow course. Then, eight point, it's almost one to the three, so it's about here. Yeah, that's here. So go directly to here and you find 0 0.022. Now that was on the friction in the wall, I want to calculate the friction in the, where is it, yeah, due to shape, so I have one inlet, which is one FT, I, I have one check valve, which is 100 FT, I got one angle valve, which is 150 FT, I got one elbow, which is 30 FT, and I got one outlet, which is one FT. So I got this, I add all these together, and my FT value, guys, it's here, must be something around, where is it, here, the material is almost here, so if I go directly here, I will see that my FT value in infinity is about, sorry, 0 0.19. So I got my K addition, and recall that I need to multiply it by the volume head, right here, and... Yeah, essentially we have everything. Let us calculate the friction loss. So this is due to shape, 30 joules per kilogram, and this is due to wall, almost 90 joules per kilogram. Adding, I got 119.4 joules per kilogram. Let me call this equation number four. And let me substitute equation number four in equation number one, which is the first equation I got right here. So I got this right now already calculated the height i have it gravity is constant density is given and the pv is one atmosphere so i got everything let's solve for pa gravity uh, density height and the value i just calculated i got that the change in pressure is this one but recall that the change in pressure is PA minus PB, so PA must be equal to PB plus delta P, and I got this right here. So in order to the system to make sense, I need to have 235 pascals here. 235 kilopascals. And this is 101 kilopascals because of the atmosphere so whatever pressure I have here if it is greater than this will move the fluid if it's lower than this uh, who knows if it's going to be able to do this work or this task and we're done guys this is a typic uh, typical uh, problem for type number one I got more problems in this section right here part one Go to solve problems and you will find many other problems. This was a free preview. You want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward, uh, user-friendly interface. So for instance, you were analyzing or studying pumps. You have it here, the pump block. And then you have the sections. If you were, for example, studying the types of pumps, you can go here. And you have all the classes right here. Not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.